Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought we'd do a Q&A. Um, I haven't done one of these in ages and I think last time I did one it was like purely business related Q&A which was a few years ago now so um, I just thought I would answer a few of your questions. I put it out on Instagram and on the community page on my YouTube channel. Um, so I've got quite a few questions to go through. I think I'm going to cover them all um, but we'll just see how we get on and then when I come to edit if it's like really long then I might cut a few out. Okay, so one of the questions that I got first was the best guide telling you what a stitch is called and when and how to use it. Um, and I actually messaged her on Instagram afterwards because I was like, what sort of thing were you looking for? Because I've actually been working on another PDF worksheet on this, um, which will be available to download in a couple of weeks. Um, and essentially I just wanted something for beginners to be able to view what the stitches actually mean, what their name is, and roughly when and how to use it. Obviously you can use any stitch for anything you like, but the general use of that stitch, so it's like a straight stitch, general use, joining seams together in a straight line, things like that, zigzags, general use, stretch fabrics or overlocking or, and little things like that. So hopefully then if you are a beginner especially if you've bought a sewing machine and that sewing machine didn't come with a free lesson um when we used to sell Janome's sewing machines we always gave people free lessons on them before they took them away because it's so important to know what all the stitches are available to you and what accessories you've got in there because otherwise I think a lot of people if you don't if you don't get shown or taught that, then all those things just stay in the box and you never get to use them, whereas some of those things could be really useful. So there is a guide coming. One guide is gonna be on stitches and their uses, and another guide is gonna be on general accessories and what you would use those for, like different feet and things like that. Um, just as a useful download for you all. Um, so that's coming. So I said to her, I'll answer it really briefly and then um, I will send you to my own website. <laughs> How do I sew a patch on to a bench cushion or pad that I can't remove the cover of? Um, this is from a friend of mine. Uh, it's actually quite tricky. So if I show you on this cushion here, say I've got a cushion pad and I want to like add a little piece of fabric like this. The only way you can do that is by hand with a needle and thread and you just have to like pick up the little bit of this first like a little stitch in there and then poke it through the patch that you're working on and go over and around and over and around and over and around like that all the way around you will the tricky part about it is you will catch the foam or the cushion pad underneath what you're working on um, it's very hard to just catch the fabric on the top um, you can get upholstery needles, which are like curved hand needles, um, which can be quite useful because you can like go like this as you're doing it. Um, but I actually find them quite hard to use just because I, I don't do a lot of upholstery. So I don't think that anyone should go out there and just buy loads of stuff to do for one job. So I would just use a normal um, needle, put the knot in the end of the thread and then put that knot through the patch first so you've got your thread and needle attached to the patch and then so that the knot's hidden and then go around and just catch the fabric underneath as you go. Um, I might have to do a video on that one day um, just to make it a little bit clearer um, but that's how you do it. What fabrics are best for underlining layering between the outer fabric and the lining for extra warmth? Um, I would personally use something like Cyril. Um, it's what a lot of curtain makers use as interlining and it's sort of, annoyingly I don't have any here, it's sort of like fluffy, it sticks to everything, um, like a fluffier version of felt um, but it's really warm, really insulating and it's really cheap. Um, so if you can't find it at local haberdasheries um, I would look at curtain supplies online. Um, there is a website called Just, I think it's called Just Fabrics that do a lot of curtain fabrics and they sell Cyril, I'm pretty sure. Um, or if I think of anywhere, I'll link it below. What are some of your go-to ways to use up scrap fabric? 
well, my absolute go-to is free motion embroidery because you only need pieces like this big to do different designs and shapes on them. Um, so definitely take up free motion embroidery and let me teach you how to do it. Um, other things I do with scrap fabrics, scrunchies, like little gifts for people, scrunchies, little drawstring bags as gift bags, because you can do like um, different, you know, join a few together and then make a gift bag out of it. Um, I like the sort of like patchwork scrappy things. Um, so like just joining lots of bits of fabric together and then cutting out something out of that fabric. Um, I find that quite fun. Um, I've even made a pair of free range slacks out of different scrap pieces of linen. I just sewed them all together in lines and then um, then cut the pe pack pieces out of them. So there's, there's a lot you can do, but my go-tos are probably free motion embroidery first and then little gifty things um, that I can give to friends as like extra presents. Is there anything you've made that has been so disastrous it nearly put you off sewing for good? Um, I don't think I've done anything that's made me, I've never been put off sewing for good. Um, but there has been a few things that I've wanted to throw across the room. Um, one thing I made years ago that for some reason really got to me was a, a true bias Nico top. I'd made a dress out of this beautiful green jersey. Um, if you are a very long standing follower, you would have seen that dress, you remember that dress. Um, and I had some like leftover jersey that was like a waffle jersey. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna use it and make a little Nico top because it requires like next to no fabric. Um, and I made it and I didn't check the stretch content on it and basically I couldn't get it over my head. And then I took it off and I tried to like widen the neckband and then make remake another neck piece and I did that. Um, and I joined on and then it looked really weird and basically I think I tried to fix it about four times and in the end I just overstretched it in all the wrong places and I reworked the fabric way too much and it just looked horrendous basically and it still didn't fit over my head so um yeah that really got to me I don't know why I just didn't give up when I realized that the stretch content wasn't good enough but I didn't. Um, so that was really annoying. And there's been a few, I think some of my hardest projects have been when I used to write a lot of projects for magazines. Um, because you are making all the templates and working everything out yourself first, you know, I would come up with a design, draw my designs out, and then I would use some scrap fabrics to like experiment, see how things go together. And then I would start like cutting templates. And then obviously you've got to check if those templates fit and work. And that process sometimes with the bigger projects used to take so long. Um, and then you'd work so hard, you think you've got it and then it didn't work out. Um, or it, it was slightly off or and so you almost have to like go all the way back to the templating again and then start again that that used to like get quite frustrating um so bigger projects yeah another one actually thinking about it was i made a patchwork quilt for hobby craft um it's still on there it's like a massive star quilt it was like for a i think it was for a single bed or maybe a double no i think it was a single bed because i wouldn't have made a sample that big and the deadline was quite tight and at the time I was so busy in the sewing school teaching so I barely had any time to make this quilt and I I almost like cried <laughs> that's how stressed out I got and I think mum and Kay were like really trying to help me and trying not to let me get stressed and then as soon as I was like like getting into it I had like 10 minutes until a student was coming in and I had to like prep for that lesson anyway it was like a dis it wasn't disastrous because it turned out perfectly but I worked very long days to get that quilt done on time um so yeah that was nearly a that was nearly a cry cry moment on the flip side what is the one thing that you made that still fills you with joy pride and happiness there's a couple of things one is a free motion embroidery self-portrait that I did for our first birthday in the sewing school 
um, I had this idea on my head of this like confetti filled joyful moment um, and it just turned out exactly how I envisioned it in my head um, and I love it when that happens and it was quite a big piece and I was really happy with it I'll put like a little photo um, and yeah I was really really proud of that and every time I see it now I'm like yeah that was one piece that I'm, I I can do free motion quite well <laughs> um, not to toot my own horn but it was one piece that I am really still proud of there's been a few like little projects that I've written for magazines that I just loved doing and I was really happy with how they turned out um, one of them weirdly is a another hobby craft project that was like a tie-dye bag um, like a tie-dye gym bag and I just loved how that turned out and I loved how the photos came out um, and yeah that was really fun to make because I love doing tie-dye it was just a fun project there's like little random things like that that I just love doing and every time I see them I'm like that was really fun clothing wise one of my favourite pieces I've ever made, it's quite simple, was the Halon dress by Paradise Patterns. I made a blue tensile twill version for my 30th birthday and I just loved it. I loved wearing it, I love the way it fit um, and every time I look at that dress it just brings me happiness. I love the dress and it reminds me of like a really fun party that I had with all my friends. Um, so yeah, that probably the other thing that I love still oh there's another there's another question in this one if now you could give your the younger you one tip about sewing what would it be um that's quite a hard one I would say just start something when you try something new especially with sewing you do have this apprehension of it going wrong and what I used to tell a lot of my students is it will probably go wrong but in the in the process of actually doing it or at least starting it you learn so much that the next time you do that thing it'll be so much better and even if you have to unpick something more than once um, every time you unpick that you won't make that same mistake again don't ever start something it goes wrong and then you go oh sod it and then put it to the side just wait a while until you feel mentally ready and then go back to it because you you do learn a lot in that process of just having a go um so I have in the past gone oh I'm not really confident in that aspect so I'm gonna like leave it um, especially when I was starting out, I was like, oh, I'm not going to do... It took me three years to start dressmaking. And it was only when I used to work for Tinning the Buttons, when I used to teach free motion embroidery at their studio. Obviously, they make dressmaking patterns, and Tilly was the one that was like, why don't you just have a go? And I was like, oh, it's not really for me. I've done lots of dressmaking in the past, and, like, I don't know, it's quite... The, the process is very long, and getting the fit right is difficult and she was like just have a go especially with stretch fabrics because I was so scared of stretch fabrics um and then I just did it with the cocoa I think it was and I loved it and then got obsessed and then haven't stopped since so that was a fair few years ago um but yeah just start I've been sewing for a couple of years and fully self-taught well done you I want to learn how to adjust patterns what would you recommend so if you just want to adjust patterns in terms of size um there's quite a few youtube videos on that which you can watch it's not as difficult as a lot of people might think the tricky parts come when you want to change things like um armholes shoulders things like that because once you change one aspect of a pattern something else can change so I would definitely go to someone like um, Project Patterns. Um, Project Patterns, she has loads. She did, a, she did a workshop at our unit once. Um, and she does loads of YouTube videos and she does private one-to-ones and online workshops. And in pattern classes like that, you can learn to manipulate your own patterns and make your own patterns from scratch. Um, and it's a real 
real skill to have and it's probably the hardest thing to learn. I attended the workshop, um, learned all about like dart manipulation and changing the style of something and how to move darts around. It's fascinating and it's so much fun, but it is like another level of engineering. So you you have to really want to do it, is what I'm saying. Um, but once you've learned that skill, it's incredible. And then you can basically draft your own patterns from scratch. Do you have a pattern suggestion for trying an invisible zip for the first time? No, it's a short answer. But I would suggest a shift dress. You want something that has a slight fit on it and has a bodice seam. So look for something very simple so that you can make the pattern very simply and then look for a bodice seam along the waist joined to skirt pieces because then you can practice putting an invisible zip in and getting the bodice seams to line up. Um, and a lot of people get nervous of that but actually it can help you because um, you can sort of like tweak it and you know where to line things up. Um, just putting an invisible zip in, pin, 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 pin. It's the only time that I think if you're unconfident, baste stitch it. I'm not a fan of baste stitching. I am lazy and it takes too long. With something like that, I would baste it, especially if you haven't done an invisible zip before, just because then you can try it on and then see how it works and how it lines up. Um, so yeah, that's my tip. I would like to ask you if you know of an overlocker that isn't too expensive to buy, but is fairly easy to thread. I have recently bought a Janome 9300DX and I found it so difficult to thread. I would love to know if anyone else has found that or it's just me. Overlockers are difficult to thread. All of them are, unless you've got a grand to spend on an air threader that wafts air through it and sucks the threads where you need them and then you don't have to do anything. Um, the overlockers we use, and the one that I have at home, here in the corner, is the Janome 6234XL. It is by far the most user-friendly threading overlocker, if I'm completely honest. Um, you are talking at like, I think they're 550 pounds, not cheap. Um, but they are a really good overlocker and they're color coded. The thread guide is really clear. I've got a few videos, which actually I get quite a lot of negative comments on, but one day I will redo them. I didn't have a camera lens at the time that went close enough and people got very annoyed about it. Yeah, I just find that model has been the easiest. There are other brands that I've seen. People used to bring in their own overlockers for lessons in the sewing school. I have seen quite a few that are quite good. Um, I would personally go to a sewing machine shop that has lots of different models of overlocker, have a look at how they're threaded and just open it up and see if there's a very clear thread guide in there and if it's colour coded. And if it is, get that one because they're the easiest. What's the oldest me made item you have that you still regularly wear? The oldest? I wear regularly. Uh, Tabitha t-shirts I've had. Nora's. One of my Nora's actually. There's a grey Nora that I wore, I wear all the time. Um, and I've had that for years. I am someone that wears a lot of the same clothes. I don't, I wear things until they wear out. Do you know what I mean? I don't make new things all the time. Um, in fact, lately I haven't made anything new for a very long time. Um, I do wear my stuff a lot. Um, so Tabitha t-shirts from the Tilly and the Buttons book or the Tilly and the Buttons Nora. I have worn some Noras for years and I wear them all the time. I have problems with my stitches when I sew voile or double gauze. The stitches tend to bunch up tightly. So I try and loosen the tension but then the stitches are all loosey-goosey at the back. Any tips? Um, that sounds like a, like a blunt needle. Um, sometimes 
it either sounds like a blunt needle or the wrong type of needle. I don't know what type of needle you're using, but maybe try um, a Sharps or Microtex needle um, and see if that helps. Don't mess around with the tension too much. Your thread tension shouldn't need changing. Also, what thread are you using? Use a really good quality, like Gutterman Sew All thread. For double gauze, I would use cotton. For voile, I'd use polyester. Um, but yeah, good thread, sharps, microtex needle. How did I get into sewing? Um, this is a nice question. Uh, I got into sewing because my mum taught me from a very young age. Um, I think I've been sewing since I was four. Um, my mum has always sewn. Um, she was taught by her great grandma. She also knits and crochets. My mum can do everything. She can macrame too. Um, uh, she, we used to have like little felt kits and I used to have like, you know, do you remember those with the big plastic needle and the wool and you do that? I do those all the time. Then my mum got me into like cross stitches. Every time we used to go away on holiday, she'd get me a cross stitch to do to keep me occupied and I'd do cross stitch and do all those sort of things. I loved it. She would make all my costumes for like plays and I used to do dance, so all my dance costumes. Um, and yeah, so she just got me into it and then I would help her do sewing, especially if it was something for me. She'd be like, let's do this. And then I would help out. Um, then I made my prom dresses when I was younger. Um, and also my nana, so my dad's mum is a seamstress um, and she's like incredible. There's literally nothing that nana can't do. Um, I have once seen her um, get a jacket that was two sizes too small for someone, fit them with no extra fabric. It's amazing. Um, she's done like wedding dresses, like she's just incredible. Um, there's nothing that she can't do. So I've been very lucky that I've grown up around creative sewists. So it was, I just got absorbed into it and I loved it. Um, my brother and sister don't like sewing. <laughs> um, so I took it all. I took all the, the sewing tuition. Mum has taught me to knit and crochet. I'm not very good at knitting and crochet. I'm better than I thought I was. Um, and I've made some quite technical things, but sewing is definitely my number one. I like this question. If you could be a fabric, what fabric would you be? <laughs> I'd want to be two-way sequins, but I think I'm actually a quilting cotton. <laughs> a quilting cotton with a nice pattern on it. Um, sturdy, easy to sew, easy to iron, but with a pretty pattern. That's, I think that's more me. Um, but I'd love to be a two-way sequin, especially like a two-way mermaid sequin. I actually bought some two-way mermaid sequins from New Craft House a few years ago and I made a pair of By Hand London Holly trousers and they are my favourite sequin trousers. Oh, I mean, I don't have lots of sequin trousers. They are my only pair of sequin trousers. Um, but two-way sequins are just so much fun. Um, so yeah, I really like that question. So thank you. I think that's enough now. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for those of you who sent me questions. Um, we will do another one maybe in like a month or so. Um, I might do some to particular, this was just a general Q&A, but I might do some for like specific um, things like dressmaking or free motion or things like that. Um, Cause I just think that would be helpful. So yeah, thank you so much for sending your questions and for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate that. Um, comment below if you want to ask me anything else or if you think I should do a Q&A of another theme or if you want me to elaborate on anything that I mentioned um, or if anything I mentioned didn't make sense to you. Please comment below. Um, and I will see you next week for another video. Happy handmade, everyone. <laughs>